This is the 2025 Range Rover Sport Dynamic SE. Is it the ultimate luxury two-row SUV? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Land Rover of Shreveport. And as always, if you want to know more about this particular model, check out the link down in the description of the video. Let's get started and talk about what you're going to find here. As far as your lighting goes, no surprises here in that we do have full LED lighting. LED headlights with signature daytime running lights. We'll also have our LED fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper. And you can tell by our sensors up here that we have all of those great driving aids, front and rear parking sensors that are coordinated with the exterior cameras so you can see what's going on around you very easy. There's a wide range of varieties on how you can do that, including using your front view camera right here. The exterior color on this model is going to be Santorini black. We're going to have a white cloud and ebony interior. We'll take a quick look at that. Now we're gonna take a much closer look at all of the controls and features later in the video. As far as your tire and wheel setup goes, we're gonna have 285 on our width, a 40 series sidewall. And these are not the standard 21 inch wheels. These are the optional 23 inch wheels. They come in gloss black and they're going to be accented with that nice red brake caliper it really stands out with all of the black that we have here i like that a lot let's take a quick look at our remote no surprises there no changes there as well but you can see what all is there we'll also have our power folding side view mirrors you can see that the turn signal indicator is built in they're heated they're power adjustable and blind spot monitoring is built in We'll also have the deployable door handles that not only just kind of have that cool effect because of how they operate, but that also helps out with aerodynamics driving down the road. And a very nice, sleek look overall, not only because of the overall design of the vehicle, but also that black exterior color, the Santorini black. We'll also find a clean look here on the rear window while you don't see a rear window wiper right here it is concealed away inside of the rear roof spoiler we finish things off with the led tail lights and our quad tip exhaust speaking of that quad tip exhaust what can you find under the hood in my opinion it's the best available option let's talk about what that is here under the hood is the 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 it makes a plentiful 523 horsepower and 553 pounds-feet of torque. Yes, I will snap that back down shortly and get it back in place. That's all made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. And let's go over here and take a look at the window sticker so I can give you the MPGs, or at least estimated. 16 city, 23 highway, 19 combined, and 5.3 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. And let me get rid of a misnomer. Some people will tell you that you have to run premium gas in this model. You don't have to. You'll get the best results if you run premium, but you can go with regular 87 octane if you want to. And when you fill up, you don't have a capless fuel fill set up. You have a gas cap. This is an 18.9 gallon gas tank. And yes, as you can see, I did snap that cover back down. Now, one thing I did want to talk about real quick we have the, we'll say, faux vents here on the hood and on the fender. While everything looks nice right there, and I do think that is a good thing to have, it's better than just kind of that lacking area. It seems like something would be lacking with just a hood and just a fender, but those are not active. It'd be nice if they were. You can tow up to 7,716 pounds with this Range Rover Sport. Power hands-free tailgate is here and your cargo capacity comes in at 31.9 up to 53 cubic feet. I'm going to push the buttons right here to lower those seats. I don't know if the front seats are far enough forward to let everything go down all the way, but we're about to find out because I know a lot of you like to see how everything looks maximized. There you go. And something interesting right here is the fact that we have our air suspension back here. I'm going to raise the back of the vehicle up. And if you need to lower the rear cargo area, that's so easy to do back here with the buttons that are back there. Just the same way as we raise it, we can also lower it. And in case you are wondering, let me just go ahead and bring the seats back up. All you, can, all you have to do is pull those buttons towards you and everything works coming back. Very easy to deal with and you don't have to hold them down 
for the process to finish. And before we hop into the interior and start talking about what you're finding there, I'm going to show you one more thing I forgot to show with these side doors, and that is what you see right there. That's called soft closed doors. So you don't have to slam the door shut for it to close all the way. And we'll take a closer look at our white cloud and ebony interior, a very nice combination of colors. A very large armrest on the door panel, very comfortable, plenty of space right there. And the control right here will control whether or not the seats have full recline or not. You can see those seats moving back and forth. A common question that a lot of people ask, do the rear seats recline or the seat backs? And in this case, yes, they do. That's what this control is right here. And that is not functional in case you were curious. Nice large door bin. They put a good size bottle in there if you wanted to. And here is what we have with the color of the seats and the design. Now these are heated and ventilated. Very nice to see where that's concerned. And we have our panoramic sunroof. The front portion will open and you have the power shade here that can be drawn forward when desired. We'll also find our fold down armrest with the cup holders built in in addition to storage. Here's our cup holders as well. Those are stowed away when not in use. Now, let me close the door so we can get rid of some of that exterior noise for the rest of the video. Well, at least most of it. There are some extra storage options in the way of rear seat pockets and the command center here for the air conditioning. You have your dual air conditioning vents located here as well. And those are not the only air conditioning vents. We'll get back to that in just a second. We also have the roof mounted air conditioning vents. So that means your rear seat passengers are going to be extremely comfortable. Now, there's a lot going on here. We can control the temperature if we want to. We can also pull on that dial right there and control the fan speed. I'm not going to turn that up too much so we don't have trouble with the audio, but we push right here, we'll also find that we have, let's go right here, here we go. We have the ventilated seats. We also have the heated seats. Don't really need that at this point in time, but it's nice to know that that's there. And you did see that I can also go right here and control my temperature, as you can see right there. So depending on what you need to do with that, you can control temperature. And you have some other controls here as well. Also, some USB options. We have a power outlet right here. And there's also a 12 volt power outlet. So a little bit of everything as far as your connectivity goes. Very spacious back here, very roomy and very comfortable. I need to be very careful because now that I've laid all the way back, I feel like it's time to take a nap. We're not there just yet. And I'll let you see how everything looks as the shade comes forward. So I can show you with the shade in place and the shade open as we've already seen. So that's gonna come all the way forward. We control all of that via the upper console right here. Here is the control for the shade and here is the control for opening and closing the power sunroof. And what about the sticker price? $122,935. Let's see what else you get for the price beyond what I've already shown you. Power seats for the driver and the passenger. Your controls are going to be right there on the door panel. And you can see you have seat memory on the passenger side, which means you're obviously going to have that on the driver's side as well. And we have the upper and the lower glove boxes here. Quite a bit of space where that's concerned, especially down here with the lower glove box. Very easy to deal with. And we'll work our way over here to the driver's side door, all of your typical controls that you expect to see. So I probably don't need to tell you too much about what is there. We'll have a power adjustable steering wheel. It is tilt and telescopically adjustable here on the right hand side of the steering column via that control. And you have your interactive driver's display, fully digital. And as you can see, one of the options is to have your navigation that's built in here on the instrument cluster. Very nice, very easy to deal with. A very clean looking but high tech steering wheel, I would say, easy to deal with. And yes, you can go in and make some changes to what's going on there with your instrument panel. You do all of that right here. Pretty simplistic. So not hard to figure out what's going on here. All I did was push this button right here and you can see what's there. I'm not going to go through everything, but just to show you a little bit, by the way, there's your head up display. If you want to make changes to that, I don't know how well my camera is picking that up, but it is there. So if you want to use that, or take advantage of that or make any changes to that, now you know how to do it. 
We'll also find the controls here for the lighting on the exterior of the vehicle. And there's one other feature that we have right here when you push that lever into the up or the down position. Some of you are probably scratching your heads saying, wow, I didn't spend enough money on my vehicle to have that option, did I? Sorry if you didn't. And can't say anything sarcastic about our shifter paddles because, well, and I don't know that anyone really uses those. How many of you actually do use your shifter paddles in your Range Rover Sport? I'm curious to know. But you can use those if you want to for shifting back and forth through your eight-speed automatic transmission. And right here, the control for your front and rear window wipers. And we'll find our 13.1-inch infotainment screen, the Pivi Pro infotainment screen, very easy to use and operate. And there is a lot going on here. Just because there's a lot going on doesn't mean that it's complicated. That's always a good point to make. And we can go right here and go in and see some of the other features we have. And just to dispel one thing that I've had some people say in my previous videos on some of these Range Rovers, they say it doesn't have lumbar support. Well, guess what? It does. There it is right there. You can see it on the screen. It's not in the place that you would normally expect on the seat or with the controls right there on the door panel for controlling the seat position, but it is here. You can also go in and make several changes depending on what you want to do, including your bolstering if you want to increase or decrease that, depending on how you're driving, or maybe your passenger wants to do that. You can do the same thing right here, as you can see, between the driver and the passenger seats. If we hit more right there, you can see what comes up. I'm not gonna show you everything, but you can fold and unfold the rear seats if you want to back there. In fact, I'll show you that that's what's happening in case somebody says that's not what that's for. You'd be surprised at what people say down in the comments section, but that does happen. So we're gonna unfold that as well. And we'll go over here and show you those camera views that I mentioned earlier in the video where you can literally see everything around the vehicle. A very nice and convenient feature. We can even go to our 3D view right here if we want to look around and see what's going on with the vehicle. Now, you can only see to a, small, to a certain degree as far as this goes. You can't see overhead here, but you can right here. As you can see, I can't actually do anything to see overhead, but you can right here, as you can see, it is nice to be able to look at every possible angle, whether it's the front or the rear or even the sides. So a very nice thing. So that way, if somebody parks too close to you, you know you're not going to hit them. That's always nice to have. So air conditioning and everything controlled here within the infotainment screen. And this is also where you're going to control the heated and ventilated seats. That's where we do this right here, ventilated and heated, obviously, based on color. Pretty easy to figure that out. Now, I would like to see some physical controls here, but that's just what we have. We'll also find right here, I don't know how well we can see that because it is kind of dark in here, but we have our wireless charging pad right there. So that's nice to have. Your shifter is very easy to deal with. I like how that just fits perfectly in the palm of my hand. And everything that you see right here is actually plastic covering the gloss black or piano black finish right there so we don't fingerprint that up. I can touch that all I want to and it won't fingerprint up right now. Button to start and stop the engine and your cup holders, but you can move those out of the way if you want to and there is space underneath here. There's a USB port. You're looking for that. You do have the built-in armrests with the seats right here which you can control the positioning of those armrests right there. But you can also use the center console lid as an armrest. For me personally, I think that's a little bit better and I find it easier with these in the up position to put my seat belt on. And we'll open this up and show the space within. This particular model comes with the refrigerated console and there are a couple of different settings right here as far as the temperature goes, depending on what you want and what your needs are. And by the way, you can see that we have the oh crap handles at every single door. That's a good thing with 523 horsepower at the driver's disposal. And by the way, if you see a flickering effect, that is not actually happening. It has to do with my camera. Now we're gonna go in here to our mode as you saw, I clicked right there or touched. We do have multiple driving modes, as you can see on the screen right here. In fact, we can go right here and you can see those modes. See what everything is. You can even go to auto if you want to, comfort, rock crawl, wade. If you're dealing with high water in your neighborhood, well, that's nice to have the wade mode or sand. Whatever the situation is, you can also go in here to configurable 
and you can configure things. We'll show you what's available here as far as all of that goes. There's a lot going on here. Depending on what you want, how you want things to work, you can kind of mix and match and build the ultimate driving experience, if you want to call it that. And ride height is here as well. Access, I like how it looks. It's just a shame that it doesn't stay at that position when you're driving, just because it looks so aggressive and so sporty, high performance, but you get up to a certain speed, I think it's 15 miles per hour, and it's gonna go back up. And the same thing will happen with your off-road mode, but when you are off-road, or if you're in a situation where you need to be a little bit higher up and you're driving at lower speeds, that's helpful as well because you're going to have the ability to stay at that height unless you get up to that speed where it goes back to your normal height. You can also see some of the other features that we have here where we have our low traction launch, all of that hill descent control, everything here. You can also turn your auto stop start off or on right there, depending on what it is you want. And you remember earlier in the video, I told you about your front and rear parking sensors. Well, here we go. Let me go into drive, not reverse, and show you what's here as far as that goes. We'll move up a little bit, and there you go. You see the indicator comes on, and so does the overhead view, so we can see how close we are to the curb right there. Not really any danger of hitting that at this point, but it still goes off and lets you know that something's close. And one more thing, in fact, two more things. You can wirelessly pair your smartphone here and you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And via Apple CarPlay, I'm going to give you, well, the best demo that I can with my microphone of the Meridian 3D sound system. Hopefully that does it justice, but I know a lot of you ask for that in the comments section, so I wanted to make sure that I give that to you. Tell me what you think. Does that sound good? Does it not? What are your thoughts? Okay, here we go on our test drive, and I'll tell you what, it's a great balance of performance, luxury, and comfort. Everything you would expect from Land Rover, it's definitely here. You have your air ride suspension. It's going to give you a very comfortable ride quality, and the ride quality is very responsive. I don't mean to look like I'm playing musical lanes here, but we do have that truck on the side of the road right there. I don't know if anybody's around or not, but we're going to move over and be safe anyway. Very roomy. I really like how roomy this interior is. If you're somebody who's well in excess of six feet tall, thumbs up for you for sure. And you have all of that horsepower under the hood, so when you need to accelerate, it's not a problem. In fact, accelerating a little bit earlier before I turn the camera on, you barely have to get into the gas pedal to get up to speed and do what you need to do. And sometimes you might find yourself going a little faster than you maybe should be, kind of like I am right now, although I am hoping to be way ahead of that train we saw back there so I can make it through before the crossing arms come down up here where we're going to turn right. And I want you to listen. So what exactly is it you're listening for? I travel this road regularly. It's a very rough road. And you might say, wow, there's a lot of road noise coming in. Well, believe it or not, it's not bad at all compared to what you can have in some vehicles because of how washboarded out this road is. So it's it's something you'd have to experience for yourself to really understand but when i say that the road noise quality is very good you don't get a lot for what we're having right there not a big deal so that's a good thing it also gives me a nice idea of how comfortable the ride quality is and the seats themselves and the thing I like about that as we easily make it through the crossing right there as I hope to is that you have such great handling here very very solid maneuverability at high or low speeds that's one reason why you might want to go into the infotainment screen and adjust the bolstering on the seats as i showed you that you could do earlier because you can have a lot of fun driving spiritedly with this range rover sport so that's nice to know that it's there the steering is very tight 
you know, very, very close to being sports car-like. In fact, it's right there on the border. It's not as tight as, say, a Corvette or something along those lines, a Porsche, whatever the case is, maybe a little bit better comparison there to say Porsche instead of Corvette, but one way or another, it is very, very solid. I love tight steering. It's just so nice to have a vehicle that doesn't have a lot of slop in the steering wheel, so to speak, or, or should I say play in the steering wheel. Maybe that's a better way to put it. So a very well-balanced vehicle. As far as the driving and the ride quality goes, all of that. And you also have this simple to learn technology. I mentioned it earlier in the video, for those of you who may have skipped around and not seen that part, the technology here, while it there is a lot going on, the thing I like is that it's still very, very simple to learn and use. So a lot of advantages here as far as this Range Rover Sport goes. Great to drive, great for traveling, comfortable. You could take the nice long road trip. You've got the latest and greatest in technology from Land Rover. Very spacious. So for the driver, depending on your height, you really shouldn't have any trouble adjusting things to fit here. In fact, somebody who may be well over six feet tall can tell us what their experience has been. I'm five foot ten, so obviously I can't do that. And there it is, the 2025 Range Rover Sport Dynamic SE. Is it the ultimate luxury two-row SUV? You'll have to tell me what you think down in the comments section. By the way, here is how we look in off-road mode if you were curious to see. Plus, a lot of you tell me you like to see the side view in the video, so there that is as well. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Land Rover Shreveport for loaning me this Range Rover Sport for the day, and a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.